it's an easy introduction. Uh, uh, most of us have known Don for years. Uh, we should get him more often. Uh, I think it's been a couple of years, uh, and, and I don't understand. I guess we, we just got to go to him more often. But uh, if there's anything that's complicated, you can't figure out how to do it, you just ask Don, and he's got such a simple answer, it knocks you over. So uh, <coughs> I, I know everybody's going to enjoy it this morning, and I certainly will. And uh, I hope you, hope you all, uh, this Don Russell, for those who don't know him, he, he's over in Oxford, Georgia. He's the host of the uh, Peach State Wood Turners meetings, and uh, we all enjoy his hospitality at his uh, amazing shop. So uh, I'm going to turn it right over to Don. All right. <laughs> oh. Thank you, thank you. While we're setting up here, we've got one little thing. Some, somebody found a drop cord and plug it in. I'm going to use it in a minute. Uh, again, my name's Don Russell. I live down near Oxford, out east of Atlanta. I've uh, been woodworking for is this, is this working? Can y'all hear me okay? Okay. I've been woodworking for 47 years. And the reason I know that is because I got married. Uh, my next uh, wedding anniversary will be 48 years. And we got married, we bought us a car. And the next thing we bought us was a ray alarm saw. And I've still got it. So I can, I can just subtract one year from, from how long I've been married from and, and know, know how long I've been woodworking. But I was, uh, I was totally uh, possessed with woodworking, I guess, from the time I was born. I, my grandfather, when I was three or four years old, he could carve out wooden knives, wooden swords and things. You know, He could take a piece of hickory and, 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 and take the middle out of it, strip the bark back, and plant a whip. You know? and Man, that just little kid, I could see him do all that stuff with just a pocket knife. So that, I was turned on to woodworking for uh, ever since I remember. That's, that's all I ever wanted to do. The day I walked in that high school shop, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. I mean, there's all this machinery. Man, you could do anything. I'd been working with hand tools up to that point. So I guess you might say it's in, in my blood, but I want to tell you I'm a woodworker first and a wood turner second. I like to turn. Uh, I represent Delta Corporation, Delta Power Tools, at their wood turning events, at the woodworking shows and uh, uh so forth. I will be at the IWF, and if you plan on going to IWF, I'll be in their booth uh, turning at the end of this month, about three weeks from now. Uh, I've been I've been representing them their wood turning activities for about ten years now, and uh, we've been in lately. We've been introducing that new uh, mini lathe they've got out there, that variable speed lathe, which is really nice lathe. So that's what I'll be turning on. So. You've got that disc over there. We're going to show you a couple of pictures. First, I want you all to see my latest project. It's a clock. Moved it upstairs a couple of weeks ago. Worked on it for about three years. It's eight feet tall. Wow. It's an Aaron Willard style with uh, added embellishment, like dogwoods and inlays and veneers and so forth. Uh, Bob mentioned earlier, uh, marketry and we were talking about marketry learn learn from Paul Surtz every year in May Paul Surtz in my opinion is the number one marketer man in the country and he comes to my shop and teaches a, a week-long class and y'all you know that we learn Bob that's about all he does now is marketry he took the course and then kind of kind of like a duck to water he's been doing it ever since but if any of you interested in learning marketry He's the man to take it from. All that detail up there that you see in that clock came from came from uh, what I learned from him. And I've had the course about eight times now, so he's been there been there for about eight years in a row. So I'm getting fair at it, but now I've got John. So uh, I don't have to work as nearly as hard as I used to. But that I wanted you to see that project. So put it on a let's go ahead and put on another other on the show some other things. There's the door. I want you to take special attention to that. If you look at those lower dogwood blossoms, the wind blew. One of them lost a petal and one of them lost a leaf and a petal. It, they fell down to the lower part of the door. So there's a little, there's little humor in something. The project that serious would be put a little humor in there. Side view. How long did it take you to do that, Doc? About three years. Worked on them on and off for three years. They're not steady. Uh, a friend of mine, we worked on them together. We made two of them. Well, actually, we made nine clocks in all, but these two were way, way fancier than any of the rest of them. And, uh, they're, they're, you know, two identical. We made them you can't tell them apart when they were standing in the shop. And of course, he took one of them, and, and I had the other one. Uh, 
there's some, some detailed fretwork. Uh, the t columns are turned and fluted. There's quarter columns that are turned and fluted. So there's a good bit of turning involved in this in this operation. That's so uh, it's made out of salon, uh, salon satin wood and king wood, and uh, that that's. <laughs> That's really a heck of a contrast. That is a tabletop, and I'm going to talk about uh, these diamonds uh, today. So I just want you to see what, what can be done with this process. Uh, it's not all turning. It's, it, you can use a lot of these processes that I use for woodworking, for decorative woodworking, okay? There's just a picture of some bowls and things that uh, different, different uh, pieces of polychromatic construction. You can see there's there's a little bit of everything in that one. There's a tabletop that uh, that I did. So, like I said, you can use these processes for uh, for different things besides turning. There it is in a tabletop. Here it is in a turning. Same pattern, diamonds. I call it fun with 30 degrees. We're going to talk about that a good bit today, but. You cut these diamonds, you can lay them into a tabletop, you can put them in a situation like this. This will be a confetti lamp with a little glass globe sets in here, and it'll be it'll be turned, a turn project. Here's that same thing in the form of a coaster. Cut the diamonds, and they're easy to cut, and I've made a coaster out of it. So what else we got up there? I believe that's about it. Yeah, there's another tabletop that's different. It's got the diamond patterns in it. Just kind of showing you what you can do with this, because I know a lot of you are woodworkers, and not wood turners, but I want you to you know show you the fact that man, this is not just just for wood turning. It works in, with both uh, both both forms, turning and woodworking. Look at that one. That, that one's neat. These are tabletops that I made. I gave them. I have three children. I gave them a pair. I made them in pairs, and I gave each one of them a pair of those bedside tables uh, for Christmas one year. And I think I made about twelve of them. And all we've got about three sets of them in our house. But look at that. And that's a lot easier than you think. A lot easier than you think. You'll realize that when I get through here. I hope you will. Okay, is that all the pictures? We're back to the clock. Okay, so advertising first. You always have to listen to advertisements. Uh, I teach classes at John C. Campbell Folk School, five classes a year. I teach a basic polychromatic class. Now, they put segmented up here. I don't, I don't say segmented. I say polychromatic staved construction. <laughs> Sounds a lot more important, right, than just segmented. No, it's segmented. What well, is it's actually segmented is a better term. But I teach a basic segmented class up there, uh, usually in April, where you do four or five projects. And I'll talk about some of those later. This, this would be one of the projects. This would be one of the projects, a bowl, some other things. Uh, I teach a uh, marketing class up there. That'll be in the next, next well, in October. And uh, in that marketry class, the project is uh, a chessboard, and we put some kind of marker in the border, like a bird or a flower or something in the four borders. Uh, I teach a toy making class in November, and uh, it's, a, it's a fun class. We make little wooden trucks and trains and circus wagons with animals in them, and I get a lot of grandmas and grandmas in there, and we all think we're little elves, and we laugh and cut up and have a good time. That's always a fun class. And then. Uh, I teach a, a advanced polychromatic stage segmented uh, class in December this year. It'll be in December this year. Next year, they move to September, I think. But uh, it's a, everybody makes a huge urn. And I'll show you some examples of that later on. And, but big, big urn. Some will have five, six hundred, seven hundred pieces in them. Everybody turns one of those. So if you want to learn some segmented turning those classes, one other class that I have is a table making class. Now this is fun. We uh, we turn. It says turning. You turn a, a center pedestal, dovetail in three legs, and then you can put a top on it. Uh, the tops are plain. We don't have time in a week to do anything like this, but you can put an oval, a rectangle where the corner is knocked off. You can make it square or you can make it round. And the top tilts. Mind if we pass this over? Oh, go right ahead. The top tilts. So that's the five classes that I teach up there. And uh, John uh, Rudert, I have uh, I've made him my assistant up there since he retired. He goes with me and uh, is working with me on it. And we go up there and have a really good time. So if you want to want to join us for one of those classes, we'd be glad to have you. So what this is supposed to be about is cutting. And everybody says cutting is the hard part. To me, cutting's the easy part. Uh, simple jig, saw. Some method of cutting an angle, some method to set it at an angle. 
see this under here? I don't know if you can get the camera to it or not. But how much more simple can you get than a piece of wood? It's all plugged in. Is this all plugged in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's under. It's under the motor, sort of. And I can't really. Well, I can do it that way. Okay. There it is. Now everybody can see it. Boy, that's a that's a real real uh, expensive stop I've got set up there. And this is you know one block of wood, another block of scrap wood, and a carriage boat. Ground the top of it off. So it'd be smooth. Some of these, some of these have letters on them, numbers on them, and you, you've got to adjust this. This is your, this is your fine adjustment. And uh, so, if you turn it and it's got those those letters and numbers left on there, it can it can make a difference if you're trying to move it a, a, a couple of thousands of an inch. So what you do is you take your saw, you set it up, you try to set it up. What happened? There? there it goes. I've got this bolt set in a position so it touches the frame. And I can tighten this down. It's rubbing against that. So what you want, you don't want that. You want this in some. Where did, here it is. Adjusting two here. I'm going to crank that in two or three turns so that it's not touching the frame. Boat goes all the way through. Carriage boat could use something with a finer thread. But I'll set this up with a block first. I'll have a block with an angle on it. I'll use that to set this saw blade, this tilt. Take this loose, tilt it over against this block. When I think it, it looks good, take it in, take it in, consider the, the carbide teeth. When I think it looks good, then I lock this down. Take a piece of wood of some sort. make a cut. Now, angle. What are we looking for in an angle? First, we've got to know where to set it. I had a block. That block is set for 11 and 1 quarter degrees because I use 16 segments most of the time. There's 16 pieces here. And the reason for that for the reason for using 16 segments, when I got started with this, all I, all back, way back in the, in the 60s, uh, the only material I could get was scrap material from W.P. Stevens Lumber Company over in Marietta, Georgia. I could get cutoffs and I could get rippings. And uh, they were all about three quarter thick. So for a 10 inch bowl, if you use 12, I like to use 12 segments because this 12 is divisible by more numbers than 16. But if you use 12, each piece got wider and you had to turn them a little, little bit too thin. They turn too thin if you spread them out. So I, I settled on 16 and I've stuck with it ever since. So the, the formula, formula for that is 360 degrees divided by the number of pieces you want to put into that ring divided by 2. 22 and a half and 11 and a quarter. So that's 11 and a quarter degree angle. 